It's been a while since I've done a technical video or something on KiCad. Uh, just know I'm not stopping doing these just because I'm starting to document some stuff with the business and the assembly line. Um, I'll still be doing both uh, just kind of intermittently between the two styles. Uh, for this video, what I wanted to go into is something that I've been working on a lot lately in preparing boards for assembly and that is on how to panelize boards in KiCad directly. There's a lot of different ways online that you'll see, uh, like workarounds, whether you use an external Gerber editor or uh, some other way with appending boards in KiCad, but they kind of all leave a lot of uh, features out there, like if you use an external, external Gerber tool, and I've used uh, GURB, uh, CAM350 and GURB tool, which are pretty high-end panelization tools. And it just, you lose a lot of flexibility when you're locked into something like that. So what I have been doing is using the append tool in KiCad, but with using a template which allows you to update the panel when your PCB itself changes. So uh, first, just a little background on panelizing a board. So here's just some different um, pictures of different panelized boards. These use what are called tab routings, which the panel itself is made up of individual boards with routed channels routed in each board with a little tab, some people call them mouse bites, that holds on the board itself. I personally like doing tabs better than the alternative, which is V-scoring, which V-scoring, V-scoring is exactly what it sounds like. You do a V in both sides of the boards, and then you break them out. So right there is where the V is on each side. And the problem with these is one, it can only be done on straight edges, and I guess three things. Two is it's not near as accurate because when you break it, it's not always going to break on that exact line. And three, it leaves a really rough edge on the entire length of the board. So I typically use tabs for almost everything. That's what I'm going to be showing in this video, but you can easily use it for B scoring as well. So what I'm going to do is I have this board right here. Um, it's an evaluation board for a high-end uh, motion control chip for a uh, job we recently did. Um, I actually am going to be talking about this um, in a um, video on the assembly line coming up. So with this board, um, really all that needs to be changed is make sure your edges are done in the drawing layer and not in the edge cut. Other than that, the board can stay as is. So from here, make sure it's saved with the drawing edges. And now you want to open up PCB new because you can't do this within a project itself. And since this is a really big board with uh, four layers and a lot of components, it makes KiCad lag quite a bit if you select a bunch. Uh, so what I do is turn off most of the layers other than the drawings because that's all we need for this first step. So from here we go to append board and we select our board and throw it anywhere on the sheet. I usually throw it um, somewhere around the origin. It really doesn't matter. Like that. And since this is a four layer board, we have to manually set up that the four layers are there. This is just a bug in KiCad, so it knows that they're here, but you have to manually hit select. So now all of the layers are here, and now what we want to do is select everything, and again, this is going to take a little bit longer than normal just because it's such a complex board. Select everything except drawings and now everything other than the outer edge drawing and some silk screen is selected so hit delete and this will delete everything on the board except that outline which is what we want 
Okay, so now this is just one last drawing, so delete that. So now we have a perfect outline of our board. Um, since this was rectangular, we could have avoided that first step just by drawing this out. But for the sake of making sure everything is accurate, I like to do it this way. So now for this board, I want to do an array of two by two. So each board, when you're doing a tab routing, I like to do two millimeters between or a two millimeter routed edge. So that means each of these need to have a two millimeter space between each. And for this board, if we take our measurements, It is 139.7 in the X and 142.24 in the Y. So if we select this and create an array from this, we want it to be two by two. And for horizontal spacing, we want it to be 141.7 and vertical 144.24. And all that is, is the length and width of the board plus the two millimeter offset we want. So here is our outline of our four boards. And for actually placing the tabs, the easiest way that I have found is to make a one millimeter grid, select your uh, origin at one of these corners. So now you have one millimeter, two millimeters, and I have a library of all of the stuff that I use for panelizing, and in that are um, footprints for these tabs. Okay, so what we want to do is, again, I have a library for all of these, and this is a double-sided tab, and what you want is you never want to have more than 10 millimeters of an edge of the board being unsupported, or else it causes the corners to droop down a lot. And with these, uh, let me get rid of the fab layer. With these tabs, you can see for each of the drill holes, they're half millimeter, and I have a 1.25 millimeter clearance, which makes the any copper layers that are there get eaten away by this outline, because you don't want to have a part or a trace or ground layer anywhere close to these because when you snap them, it could cause a short or worse in one of these edges. So for this one, now we want to take it and move it over here. And again, no more than 10 millimeters from this edge. And with this, you can just center it because you never want to have more than 75 millimeters of any edge unsupported. So just off the top of my head, I know it's going to be less, so it's 60 millimeters in between here. They don't have to be perfectly accurate on any of these dimensions. They just need to be close enough. The most important is the edge here, because if you have like 20 or 25 millimeters unsupported, that corner really will droop down a lot. So what I'm going to do is just continue on and place all of these tabs on the interior and just speed it up so you don't have to watch all of that in real time. Okay, so here are all of the interior tabs placed and I didn't dimension these perfectly just for the sake of this video. Um, not that it matters, but I usually like to make everything pretty symmetrical. So for this panel, I'm planning on having it get fed into the machines left to right. So we don't actually need to have any edges on the right or left side. The edge will just be the bare board itself, but we do have to have some on the top and bottom for the conveyors to grab onto. So we need to do the exact same thing up here, except instead of using a double-sided tab, we use a single-sided tab like these, because we don't care about the edge that's up here. It'll just stay with the tab itself. So I'll go ahead and place these just like before. Okay, so 
now we have all of our tabs placed. Now to do, you have to signify some way on your Gerber that a layer is the tab, the uh, routed edge. And for this, on this component, I'm using the comments, uh, the user comments layer. So that's what I'll use here. Um, and I don't have the default line width set, so I'll just do that globally at the end. So we want to route or draw everywhere the routed fit will go. So I will go ahead and connect all of these together. Okay, so all of our routed edges are done now. Now again, since I didn't change that in the first place, I have to do it globally here. Uh, and we want our routed edge to be two millimeters, which populates it right here. So everywhere that is blue is where the fab house will take a two millimeter router and route to. Uh, this one we can move up. Other than that, it looks fine. So that is the hard part done. Now really all we have to do is draw the edge cuts to where the actual border of the uh, board will be. And this depends on who's assembling the board, if they want a 10 millimeter rail or a five millimeter. Just for the sake of this, I will do a, a 10 millimeter rail. So this we use the standard edge cut um, layer. And draw a 10 millimeter edge. Okay, so now our panel outline is pretty much done. We can double check in the 3D viewer and obviously KiCad doesn't recognize the user comments layer as a routed channel, but you can see the overall outline and all of our tabs to make sure everything looks good, which it does to me. Now the last thing we want to do on this board is go ahead and throw on some fiducials. And what I like to do with this, at least for our pick and place, the origin is always at the bottom right hand corner, is to place the fiducials on that grid so your fiducials are on a even number. Not that it really matters, but it just makes it a little easier. And you typically don't want to do four fiducials or else it can get fed in the wrong way. So now once this is done, what I typically will do is save this as uh, like ref PCB and this is my reference panel. So now I will, after this is saved, I then save a new file as panel. Now this file that I just saved is what is going to be the working file that has the latest board on it. So we want to place the actual PCB in here now and make the grid that'll be our actual panel that we send out. So first, let's make the grid this bottom left hand corner because that's where it is on my board itself and we do the array starting from here down. So we'll append it just like we did before. So we append our board and again this is going to be pretty laggy having to move this big of a board. So we place it here and since everything's already selected we can go straight ahead and create our array which should have everything already filled in from before. Hit OK. Okay now the array is done and we can turn off the rat's nest just to make it a little bit easier. And now here is our uh, finished panel. So the key with this method is now let's say you want to make a change to the board. All you do is change the board, import it into our ref panel, 
and do the array. You don't have to make any changes on here. You don't have to try to select parts of the board to swap out. It's, of course, not as good as if Kike had added proper um, referencing within PCB new to a different um, either component or board itself, which I know is one of the biggest complaints I've been reading about, and hopefully that'll be addressed soon. But in the meantime, I think this is about the next best thing because it really only takes five, ten minutes to update it, and you can see actually. So this would not work. Um, we would have to move the panel somewhere over because of these traces or just move the traces around, but that's with any type of panel panelizing. So even if we had V scores, you would want it to be at least a millimeter away. So that is the way that I panelize boards in KiCad. Um, I know it's not perfect. There's other ways to do it. But what is really nice about this way is if you have multiple designs on a single panel, you can do it all internally with KiCad, which you can't do with an external um, uh, Gerber editor because you won't have all the centroid data correct. So that's another reason I like this method, um, and I'm sure I'll keep fine-tuning it. And if I figure out anything better, I will let you guys know. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.